Well, 2020 was definitely one nasty year with one nasty presidential campaign. There's no question about it. A lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff didn't happen. Who knows what happened? But an awful lot of things happened in the news. We had pandemics. We had riots. We had all kinds of great fun. What better way to remember the year than with a board game? This is Swing State Steel. Now, I'm going to explain how it works. Some of you are going to hate it. Some of you are going to love it. Just remember, relax. It's just a board game. Swing State Steel is a representation of the presidential campaign through the election, the election day, after the polls close, and in those magical weeks between November 3rd and January 6th. We capture it all. We have the laptops. We have the riots. We have to fund the police. It's all in this game. You won't miss a thing, and you'll finally remember the year that was. So let me explain to you how the game works. In this game, unlike other games where everybody is for themselves, everybody is against one guy. And that guy is the incumbent president of the United States. We start the game in the outer ring, which represents the campaign. All of the other players represent swing states run by the opposing party. Their job is to not let the president win their state. And they're going to make sure that that happens by hook or crook mostly by crook. Now, did any of this stuff happen? This is a work of fiction. Relax. It's just a board game. Don't worry about it. But if it did happen, it might have happened something like, like this. So let's talk about this busy board here, which represents the Swing State Steel game. It's actually not as complex as it looks. It's broken up into four rings. Each ring represents a, a, a time frame during the campaign. The outer ring, signified by green boundaries, represents the campaign from the beginning of the year through until Election Day. The next ring represents Election Day itself. The third ring, which is purple, represents after the polls have closed. Things happen after the polls close. And the fourth round, we call it the challenge round. And this is an opportunity to look at what happened on November 3rd and try to rectify any misdeeds that have taken place. To start the game, each of the swing states, first of all, someone has to decide who the president is. If no one wants that job, then it's the eldest person at the table, and that's just the way it's going to be. So that person is the president, and everybody else is playing against that president. For this illustration, we'll use red. It could be any color. During the game, um, the currency of the game are votes. And votes are represented as poker chips. And in normal poker configuration, we have one chips and we have five chips and you can make change and so on. But as a swing state, you want to collect as many of these chips as you can because the president is going to also be collecting chips. You'll be collecting them in your own color. In my case, green. This person's place, orange and blue. The president is going to be collecting them in the same three colors. So he'll have a pile of chips for the blue state a pile for the orange and a pile for the green. At the end of the game, the president is going to compare the number of orange chips he has to the orange swing state, and whoever has the most chips wins that state. The president has to win the majority of the states in order to win the election. Okay, so let's do, how does the game get started? Everybody starts off round one on the, on the uh, your standard go spot in Monopoly. And uh, um, 
the president is the only one that has any initial chips to, to begin with. There's a chart in the uh, beautiful instruction booklet that shows you how many chips he starts with, and it varies depending on the number of opponents he plays with. So he will start, he will come to the game already with some chips. And then the game begins, and the president goes first, and he will roll. We take two laps around the campaign trail, and each of the other uh, rounds are just one lap around, and that's it. You'll notice that, the, that each of the um, rounds have a blue track and a red track. The blue track is where the president traverses, uh, and the, the, the red track, the president traverses, the blue track, the swing states traverse. And there are some shared uh, spaces that everybody has to land on. As we go around, then your, everyone starts collecting votes. They may collect one, they may roll for some, depending on the space. Uh, and a lot, there's some internet ads. If the president lands on, on, say, the internet ad, he'll get one vote for each of the three states or each of the opponent states. There's also news cards dotted around, news, news spaces dotted around the board, signified with an N. When you land on a news space, This is, uh, you get to read a fake news story. And, um, and this is an opportunity for the players to collect additional votes or to lose additional votes, depending on what the story is. This particular one is impeachment. So in this card, uh, and when anybody gets a news card, the tradition is you read the headline and then you read the story. And if you're the president, you read the red paragraph and do and give or take uh, votes as, as directed. And if you are the swing state, then you read the blue paragraph and do the same thing. So in this particular one, the headline is impeachment. If it's Tuesday, this must be impeachment. The incumbent has been impeached more time than the speaker has had facelifts. But if you're constantly impeached, are you ever really? So in this case, the president has to, if he landed on the space, he would have to give up two votes because you know the drill by now. So he would return the news card and then he'd have to give two votes back to the pot. He could choose any of them he wants. So he could choose a blue or green, it doesn't matter. And that's how the board goes for round one. You go around, you do what the spaces say, you collect votes, you give them back. There's usually a banker that's keeping track of all this, so um, ask the banker to keep it straight. Now, when you finished a round, and as I said, there's two laps in the first round, you advance to the next round, and then you wait. You don't play, the other players play, and you have to wait till everybody catches up before you all start the next round, and you start the next round together. Okay. So everyone has finished it, now they moved up, people have collected votes, moved them around, and so on. Now, we're on the next round, and it's election day. And you'll see um, blue spots that are littering the board. These blue spots are cheat squares. And when a swing state lands on a cheat square, and only swing states can land on cheat squares, they collect a cheat card. Cheat cards are color-coded, and the color matches one of the rings of the board, one of the rounds of the board. They have a value associated with them, and there's usually a description of what the cheat is. Since the green cheats tend to take place during the campaign, these are more likely than not to be mail-in voter frauds. The next ring is election day. They tend to be polling place frauds. And the purple uh, cheats tend to be vote counting frauds, um, ballot dumps, big, big time frauds. Anyway, so collect the cheat cards. Now, the way the cheating takes place is when you cheat, you essentially have to, you can only cheat it for the round you 
you're currently in or a round you've been in. So if, if you're in the blue round, you can play a blue cheat or a green cheat. You can play the cheat before you roll. If you forget to play the cheat and you roll, you can't play it until your next turn. But you, you, you call out the cheat, you tell the president, I'm playing a postmarked fraud cheat. It's got a value of two, and you can read it aloud if you'd like. And then you place that down face, uh, face up with uh, your other play cheat cards, and the president has got to give you two. That's just the way it is. He doesn't have a chance to fight you on it. You just took two votes from him, and that's just the way it is. And that's how it goes. As we go around the board, the cheats get heavier and heavier. In fact, there are some special squares after the vote, after the ballot uh, counting is, starts, and the polls have closed, um, uh, say, wood or main break. If you're landing on a wood or main break and you play a cheat, your cheats have double value because all the poll watchers have gone home. So it's great. Now, while this is going on, the president is busy collecting evidence cards. He gets those by landing on an E-square. So as he's going around, he'll be collecting evidence cards. He can't use them until the last round. So now when we get to the last round, the last round becomes a card game. And the way the last round works is only the president's pawn plays, the die is not used, the banker advances it, uh, the pawn around, and the round and the uh, uh, and the the uh, uh, the round is organized in weeks, starting from November third through till January sixth. Each week is a card hand. The president will play an evidence card. So he'll play. Boom. I'm playing an eyewitness evidence card. It's got a value of one. All of the other, all of the uh, other swing states, they've kept, they've kept the cheats that they've played, and they've kept a couple of other black wild cards they may have collected, but they have to discard everything else. So all they have left are black wild cards they've picked up and the cheats that they've actually played. And now in the card game, they have to lay down a play cheat on top of the evidence card. This evidence card is green evidence or blue evidence. So the swing state has to play either a blue card or a green card. And when they do, those votes go back to the president. So as we go through round by round, we play card hand by card hand, the president tries to get some of those votes back. And as I said, there are some, there are some wild cards um, that keep it fun um, that, that, are, uh, that explain themselves. Anyway, now we're at January 6th. The game is over. Everything's over except for the counting. The president will now count for each of the swing states how many chips he has left and he will compare that to the number of chips the swing state has. So he'll see how many greens does he have left, and then the green swing state will count his final votes, and whoever has the most votes, they win that state. The president needs to not just beat one state, but he has to beat the majority of the states to win the election. If he wins, the majority, in this case, will be two out of three, he wins the election and he's back for another four years. He doesn't win the two out of three. He doesn't win the election. And what are you going to do? Have a riot? Okay, let's get back to the game. Would you please join me, Mr. President? Good to see you again. See you. I believe it's my turn. And I would like to start my turn by playing a blue two value cheat, ballot stuffing fraud. Register, uh, let's see, repeat votes from one voter or log. This can happen if machines are used, the paper is rejected and the poll person puts them aside later for scan. Um, two votes, please. That's totally unfair. It's the game. This is a swing state steal. Hey, relax. 
It's just a board game. game.